Chapter 10 covers an in infection control, which is a very important topic in healthcare. Infection control is to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Infectious diseases, of course, are caused by a pathogen, which are disease-producing microorganisms. The signs and symptoms of these infections differ depending upon whether it's generalized or localized. A generalized or systemic infection affects the whole body and includes the signs and symptoms such as headache, fever, fatigue, and the others listed. And a localized infection affects one area of the body and the signs and symptoms differ. The area may be red, swollen, warm, and painful. When we talk about infection control, we spend a lot of time talking about the chain of infection. And these are what needs to be present in order for that infection to spread. So if you read through the links on the chain, and that's what's listed here in bullet points, you'll understand how infections are spread. First of all, you need the pathogen and the pathogen is found in the reservoir host. That can be the human body, contaminated food, water, animals. There's a portal of exit, the way the pathogen escapes from the reservoir host, like blood or urine, other body secretions. There's a route of transmission, and that is how that pathogen is transmitted through the air, food, insects, direct contact. And then there's a portal of entry, how that pathogen enters a new host, and that new host is typically a susceptible host, someone who does not have adequate resistance to the invading pathogen. So you see the chain of infection here. Look at the links, but also look at the exterior of the chain for ways to break that chain, to stop the spread of infection. Now I talked about a susceptible host. Most people have defense mechanisms that prevent most infections, and you'll see quite a few. We have cilia in our respiratory tract, we cough and sneeze, we have tears, we have acid in our stomachs, not only important for digestion, but also to destroy pathogens. Mucous membranes trap the pathogens. The fever that we get um, helps to kill microorganisms. And the white blood cells that increase also act to destroy the pathogens. In a healthcare setting, an infection that's acquired in that setting is called a healthcare associated infection or a nosocomial infection. Industrial illnesses or diseases we contract at work, needle stick injuries, this is very important to prevent. So as a healthcare provider, you will receive training on the proper handling and, and disposal of needles. And we'll talk quite a bit about hand washing. It's the most important procedure for preventing healthcare acquired infections. Hand washing is something that healthcare providers should be diligent about. And if you are the patient or sitting bedside of a patient, you should feel free to remind that healthcare provider if you do not see proper hand washing. There are regulatory agencies that help to safeguard healthcare professionals, patients, and the public, such as the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, and OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Let's talk a little bit about asepsis. Asepsis are methods used to make the patient, worker, and environment as pathogen-free as possible. Medical asepsis has the goal of reducing the number and spread of pathogens. Good hand washing, good personal hygiene, cleaning, disinfecting. This is medical asepsis. Surgical asepsis has the goal of completely eliminating the presence of pathogens. So sterile caps, gowns, masks, um, sterilizing any equipment or surfaces in the OR, all of this is surgical asepsis. Remember, breaking just one link on the chain of infection stops the infection. So whether that is um, 
making sure that our patients have good immune systems, are getting proper nutrition, getting proper sleep so they can ward off infection, whether that is washing our hands and decontaminating surfaces. Um, and of course, wearing personal protective equipment is part of uh, the standard procedures that occur in a healthcare setting. It's very important that you practice good hygiene, good nutrition, good fluid intake, um, stress uh, relief so that you can maximize your own resistance as well. Now when we talk about microorganisms, it is very important to distinguish between different types. Transient flora can be pathogenic or non-pathogenic. So these are things that may be tra transmitted to our hands just through activities of daily living, and we remove them by hand washing. Resident flora are present at all times, and it's not possible to remove these, although they can be reduced with surgical aseptic hand washing. It's also important to understand what standard precautions are and when we should use them. Standard precautions should be followed at all times in healthcare, treating everyone as potentially infectious. So potential sources to um, be concerned about are blood, fluids and secretions besides, not including sweat, non-intact skin, mucous membranes, and any unidentified body fluids. And with those specified situations, it's important that we hand wash and also we wear personal protective equipment anytime you're exposed to those potentially infectious materials. Be sure to respond to this uh, mini lecture and that will happen next.